Well, good day, everybody. It's a lovely spring day here in uh, Lucknow in New South Wales. And you can see the day sun shining. It's great. The ducks and the geese are about. But today, it's some biogas day. Now, being spring, I know I'm a little bit late to the party, being uh, trying to do a bit of heating with biogas. But uh, a lot of you guys out there are not from Australia. So you guys will be going into the winter time now which this might be handy for you. So what I've got here is a Renai Ultima 2 that I've picked up. Uh, it's about 2,500 bucks worth and I picked up the 50 bucks of uh, a Facebook marketplace because uh, the lady didn't really know what she had. But, so this was for natural gas. Then I used it for LPG heating in the greenhouse. And since uh, we had a big storm, the greenhouse no longer exists, um, I've converted it. So, I'm going to run you through how we convert this to uh, biogas. Right, first things first, I should probably say that you, unless you are a licensed gas fitter, you should probably not attempt this. Uh, messing around with gas can be dangerous. When I uh, used this in the greenhouse, it came as natural gas and I converted it to LPG. I used a licensed gas fitter to convert it. Um, but now for my own purposes, I am confident in my own ability to convert to biogas. So, just be wary of that. As you can see here, I'm in a bit of a rush to do this because my bag is getting full again. And this tank is full. And I've got a secondary tank up near the barbecue that's full. Uh, so I have to start using some. Now, the heater comes with this bayonet fitting. So, I've attached this regulator with this fitting as well. So, we can use it. Um, now, with this, it's very similar conversion to the outdoor patio heater video that I put up and as well as the barbecue video that I put up. These Ultimate 2's they do have settings where you can hook a manometer up to the pressure and adjust it from there. You can actually adjust the pressure up in here but I've, I've tested it without it and it works fine. Um, so same principle all you need to do is take off the restriction valve in this case I've drilled it and the Venturi so we'll start pulling this apart and I'll show you what the go is. All right, first off, I'll take this bottom plate out and then there's two screws under here. Oh, I have to take it out. And this will lift off. I'm trying to just pop over here. Oh, I've got a bit of weight to it. Right here. So the internal workings of it. Let's pick you up here. Okay. Obviously, gas line comes in here, up, 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 into these regulators here. All right, there's a lot of internal workings for the temperature settings, but you know we're not too fussed with that. What we really need is just the gas line, find out where the venturi is, and find out where that restriction nozzle is. And as I said, I've already done this, so I know where it is. Um, but here, this grill, it's under here. So we're going to have to take this off. I think it's just four screws and uh, restriction nozzles down in here so I'll do that okay this grill is off now if we move in closer here we can see that that there is the uh, restriction nozzle you can just undo that with uh, some pliers but this here is a venturi so it was locked in there with a screw, which I've taken out. Now with this, uh, it only goes half, halfway. It either goes full open or halfway shut. So now for biogas, same with the barbecue, same with the outdoor patio heater, we need to shut that off. We don't want any air mixture here. We want, it, we want the air mixture in there. So I'll take that out and show you. I do apologise for the shake your film I'm trying to do all this one handed so there's a screw here I have this in place so I've just undone that and so this can slide now I'll just take this out okay restriction nozzle now be, be aware that I've already drilled this so you can see that the hole is a lot bigger so it was only 
or oh, maybe one and a half mil um, because biogas needs a bigger hole we've drilled it with our drill press on the, on the workbench here and of course you have to excuse my mess I use my workbench so it's uh, dirty okay so all I said, like I said just in the drill press bang drill that hole out all right so the restriction nozzle is back on the venturi has been plugged with some very very technical foil I'll probably uh, end up taping that when I get around to it the gas bottle gas is on bayonet fittings in let's give her a whirl twin degrees lovely spring day it's going down to seven tomorrow winter's kicking back in uh, let's see this click 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 there's some gas and we've got ignition Trying to get in there a bit more. Probably can't see it. It's definitely on. There's a uh, warm air blowing through here. After being for ears, there's a bit of uh, blue foam you can see down there. Like I said, by gas, it can be so simple or as hard as you make it. But this, this is uh, easy peasy. You know, we're turning food, food waste, into gas, and then you can heat your home. I'll put all this back on so you can see the final product. Uh, yeah, like I'm certainly no activist, but you know, coal seam gas, fracking, whatever. You know, we've got rubbish that's going to the tip that can be turned into gas to heat your home. Now I know some of you out there are going to ask me how long will that heater run for? The shorter answer is till the tank runs out. The long answer is that natural gas has a value of about 39 megajoules per cubic metre. And this bag behind me, once it's full, will be a cubic metre. So once I compress it in that tank, in theory, with that heater, uses between 15 and 30 megajoules between two and four hours, which does not seem like a lot. This is why biogas has some downfalls. First of all, you need to have digesters with, which can uh, produce enough and quickly. You need storage. Uh, like the two digesters I've got here, if I feed them regularly, I can work out that bag in probably a day. So I've got four hours of heating per, per day. But if I use it for cooking, like in my barbecue or the, the shower, the outdoor shower I've got, no, it'll last me a while and I don't need to feed the biodigesters that much. Uh, another concern I have is having a tank, a pressurised gas tank, be able to use a heater inside your house, having that tank inside your house. For me, uh, I, I wouldn't recommend it just in case, but it'd be great if uh, this biogas can be plumbed into the natural gas lines uh, once it's all scrubbed and uh, cleaned just plumbed into natural gas so you can use it in your home with the fitting that's already there so you can't see it but it's definitely still on you can hear it and it's pumping out some heat oh yeah that's it that's toasty so like I said Biogas, it can be as difficult as you want, or it can be as simple as you want. But me, I'm just curious about what we can use it for, and if we can uh, be environmentally conscious. Like I said, food waste in the gas, it's a great way to bloody recycle. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Um, easy, easy, easy. Like I said, a bit of safety concerns, but it can be done. Um, I've had a few comments of people asking me for schematics. I will try and, and endeavour to do those. Do a video, you need to do a stop, start, pause the screen and have a look at the pictures that I put up. But otherwise, have a great day.